Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are talking about Phlox, Google's replacement for its third-party cookie technology, uh, which is wrapped and presented as some huge advancement in privacy uh, for consumers, but it's actually uh, Google's latest, smartest and slyest way to track all of us all over again. Let's dig deep. <laughs> Before we get to what the flock flocks are, uh, it's important to understand why uh, Google is doing it. So since uh, 2018, um, privacy activists have been winning the battle against big tech. There's been a huge movement uh, against how our data has been harvested to target products at us. Uh, in 2018, there was a whole Cambridge Analytica scandal where millions of profiles, uh, data from millions of Facebook profiles were taken by this uh, analytics firm Cambridge Analytica which then eventually used it to influence big events like uh, the Brexit vote uh, and even the US presidential elections leading to uh, the election of Donald Trump. So people started to pick up that their personal data is being harvested without them really knowing about it and them definitely not knowing how the companies were using this data to sell it to advertisers so that they could target you or whatever product they are selling. Uh, so this was the general sentiment. So the US government, uh, Senate committees drag in the tech CEOs to grill them, but ask them a series of uh, inane questions, which instead of challenging them, probably confuse them uh, more. How many data categories do you store? Does Facebook store on the categories that you collect? If I move from here and go over there and sit with my Democrat friends, which will make them real nervous. Does Google track my movement? Does Google, through this phone, know that I have moved here? How does that show up on a seven-year-old's iPhone who's playing a kid's game? Congressman, uh, iPhone is made by a different company, and so... Uh, I'm from Google. I'm not the company who makes iPhone. <laughs> So yeah, some fun questions. Now let's talk about cookies. What are cookies? Uh, cookies are small files uh, stored on your system when you visit a website. Uh, now these are of two types, first party and third party. First party is when the cookie stored on your system is from the site you visit, right? So this could include things like your preferences uh, on the site so that your experience when you revisit the site in the future is stored and the site knows who you are and so the, your experience is better. Uh, but the particularly problematic thing is a third party cookie because this comes from a third party. So say you visit a news uh, website um, and there's a Google ad running on that particular site. Now the site will also push a Google cookie onto your system. Now what this Google cookie does is track your behavior on that particular site as well. Uh, and so since most of the internet is covered in the Google ad network, everything you're doing, every site you visit, uh, the Google uh, cookie, because of the Google cookie, Google is tracking uh, what you're doing, what your preferences are, what you're clicking on, and building a very rich profile about you in its database. This is then sold to advertisers who then use that to uh, target very specific ads at you. So that's how the third party cookie works. You know what, let me show you. Let's go to NY Times. Hopefully my ad block won't block the ads. So uh, yeah, I'm getting pushed this uh, jewelry ad because of course I'm a connoisseur of uh, precious stones, clearly a terrible profile. So yeah, so on the bottom you see your tracker settings from NYT and this is their uh, notice. So most times uh, what happens is we click, uh, we mindlessly click accept because they make it annoying uh, so that people don't read and just click accept. So this is because uh, the European Union put out GDPR in 2019. Uh, which said customers have to explicitly or visitors to the site have to explicitly give consent uh, for cookies to be pushed onto um, and onto their systems. Uh, so websites just made it annoyingly difficult to use the website without uh, accepting. Uh, so this is NYT, but what's interesting is uh, if you go to Manage Trackers and if you look at their uh, uh, cookie policy, uh, just let's just check what trackers there are. Of course, they they are you. They will use their own trackers uh, to see what you do on the NYT website. But who else is getting uh, information from what you're doing on the site? What trackers do we use? Okay, essential trackers, customer support, blah blah blah. All of this is cool. Preference trackers. This is you know to uh, store your preferences. Remembers which edition. Of course, super useful. Uh, fine, you know language, geography. All of this is okay. But as you keep going, you see, uh, you know, 
there's a there's a column which says whether this cookie is first party set by the site or third party and suddenly you see hey facebook why should facebook know what you do on uh, nyt and snapchat and twitter and microsoft bing and linkedin and adobe uh, google uh, all <laughs> all the major ad networks store cookies when you press accept uh, and when you hit uh, new york times and this is the same thing across most major, web major websites so uh, whatever you do here uh, goes to the unique profile each of these large ad networks uh, have about you uh, so that's the problem with third party cookies so my google profile probably just says uh, you know ole loving uh, weirdo who discusses big boss on reddit every day and watches compilation of uh, kane exiting the ring uh, with a backflip uh, so that so 80% of alphabet which is google's parent company's revenues comes from google ads that's 150 billion dollars a year but despite that google announced that it's going to kill off the third party cookie by the end of 2022 wow a company which really loves privacy for its customers and is willing to give up 150 billion dollars such a heroic announcement Obviously not. Why is Google killing off so bravely its money-making machine, the third-party cookie uh, system? Uh, first, obviously, the societal trends we discussed. Customers are now much more aware of uh, what's happening with their data. Uh, they're concerned that companies are using their data without them really knowing about it. And they're noticing when uh, they get pushed an ad uh, as soon as you Google for something. Uh, so Google is responding to these uh, trends in the society. They can't be as blatant uh, about taking our data as they've been in the past. Uh, the second is the effectiveness of uh, third-party cookies has been coming down because uh, Chrome, uh, Google Chrome alternatives like Safari and Firefox already blocked uh, third-party cookies a few years ago. Uh, obviously, there was no uh, noise made like Google is making now, but it's just following uh, the suit uh, since uh, there's no data coming to Google from the other browsers. The effectiveness of the third-party cookie has has re reduced significantly. So Google is now saying, "Fine, we will also stop it." Uh, the third thing is, <laughs> you don't need third-party data, uh, you know, to the extent that you needed in the past, because Google is already creating an amazing profile of you from the first-party services it's offering you, from Search, from Google Chrome, uh, from uh, YouTube, Gmail, all the first-party services that uh, of Google that you use. Uh, you're sending back information to Google, which is, you know, uh, adding to the profile Google has on you, which makes us come to the final point. And if anything is free, uh, you're probably the product. So Google is giving you all your uh, Google Maps and search and YouTube and Chrome for free because it's uh, taking data from all of this. Um, Chrome, uh, we all love Chrome. Chrome has like 70% market share. So Google doesn't even need third-party cookie because the 70% of the market, uh, which is using Chrome, uh, is sending back data. And obviously, uh, Google has an alternative to uh, the third-party cookie ready, which is where we come to uh, Flux. Flux stands for uh, Federated Learning of Cohorts, and it's Google's uh, replacement to the third-party cookie. So how does Flux work and how is it better? Uh, one, Flux uh, does not do individual uh, tracking across sites. Uh, Flock puts people of similar interest into anonymized groups and then advertisers can target those groups. So yes, it's better that your individual profile is not tracked, but Chrome is tracking your behavior across uh, uh, across uh, all this all the activity you do on Chrome and then depending on how granular the the group you are put in, uh, you could be effectively targeted almost the same way. In fact, Google say, uh, tells advertisers that uh, flocks are 95% uh, as effective as uh, third-party cookies. So as the consumers, I guess it's just uh, the advantages are there is no cross-site tracking. Uh, flocks are supposed to be uh, reset every week um, and you can opt out. And we know how that worked out in case of third-party cookies. So it's better, it's different, uh, it's a lot of... Uh, uh, legalese and PR around basically a different way of doing the same thing by Google. So one final thing about Flocks. In the third party cookie era, there were a lot of independent ad networks, independent of Google. Like we saw on the NYT side, there were a bunch of trackers from Facebook and Snap and uh, Adobe, etc. So advertisers had a choice of which uh, ad network to go to target, uh, you know, whatever kind of users they wanted to go after. But in the Flock era, uh, Google will be the only one who will be collecting uh, this amount of uh, information from the users. 
because they are dominating the uh, web browser market with Chrome. Uh, independent ad networks won't be able to push their uh, uh, trackers the, the way they used to uh, in the third party cookie era. Now, this is a good thing for us, but the problem is now Google becomes even more of a monopoly. Uh, advertisers can't go to other ad networks. Google becomes the sole, uh, you know, the biggest ad network and they'll push out the uh, uh, you know, other independent ad networks. Uh, good and bad, but you know, as we've seen, monopoly is always a bad thing. So that's it about Flocks. Uh, it's a brave new world. Google's trying new things. Uh, in the third party cookie era, uh, the web was just evolving. Uh, so they could push it as a standard and uh, and made a bunch of money out of it. The success of Flocks will depend on uh, how well uh, other networks adapt to it. There's already news that uh, you know large sites like Facebook and uh, Apple and uh, Amazon are rejecting flocks and explicitly making uh, customers or visitors opt out of flocks so no data goes back to uh, Google. So there's a large battle for uh, the user customer data which is coming up. Uh, Apple doesn't care because it makes its money by selling devices. So it will side with the customers in this battle against uh, big tech. Facebook is obviously the one who's been cribbing the most because it does not have a web browser. So all of its uh, uh, all of its revenue depended on either cookies or uh, on on device tracking, which even Apple now is sending notifications to customers. So Facebook uh, is sort of losing out. So it will be interesting to see what they come up with. I'm expecting a browser or even a complete device or OS, etc. Uh, Google will push forth with Flock, keep justifying it, but it remains to be seen uh, how much of a web standard it will become. So that's the video. Tell me what you think about Flocks. Uh, your views on privacy in the comments. Tell me how I can improve the video, the quality, production, setup, uh, and see you again in the next video. I'm going to be more regular. See you again next time. Bye.